Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about our newest purchase, which is a, it's a car, and we're gonna be talking about why we don't travel as much. Kind of two things that conflict, but enjoy today's video. So, many people have been asking us why we haven't been traveling as much. There's a lot of shows going on. There's one in Chicago. There's going to be one uh, in Pennsylvania very soon. Um, and the main reason that a lot of this is happening is because we've been trying to expand local connections. And a lot of that has to just do with how you want to grow, if you are a coin dealer, how you want to grow your business, right? So I know a lot of young guys that are my age that are going to every big show buying big coins and getting clients that way. We take a different approach to how we uh, get clients. We actually make YouTube videos. We do a lot of posts. We uh, try to interact with a lot of local dealers to find um, great coins. And the reason why we're talking about this today is because we got a lot of great coins from Trent. We got a lot of great coins from Royal Coins. And, um, you know, as you start to progress in the hobby and understand a little bit more when you're either buying coins or selling them full time, is that you're going to have to understand your market and where you are, um, or you're gonna have to understand your market and or like where all these younger guys are. And so, what we've d decided to do is not travel as much, try to cut back on expenses as much as possible and get ourselves equipped so when, when we uh, you know get a lot of local connections ready and done, we can start to move on to bigger kind of arenas like uh, the Chicago show this week or PAN. Um, and the thing about everything that's going on right now as well is that you know fuel costs are triple what they were um, when, when this president came in. A lot of things have doubled in price. There's a lot of things that just, it'll take you $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 to get across the country before you even buy a single coin. And so we were doing a lot of that about six months ago and we decided that it just wasn't advantageous. And the way that you can actually overcome that as a, as a dealer is that if you bring 500000 600000 uh, maybe a million dollars in inventory to a show. And that really uh, is what we're trying to aim for. But in the meantime, like I said, we're trying to work on local connections because those mean a lot. You find a lot of great coins and you don't have to pay a lot of money to get them um, in terms of the upfront costs of traveling and everything else. So got some great coins from Trent, got some great coins from Royal Coins, and uh, we also have a cool car to show you at the end of this video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, uh, just the tip that I'm giving if you guys are experiencing some of the similar things that I am, let me know down in the comments below and subscribe if you're new. But let's show you guys some coins. We hope you enjoy them. So a lot of variety in this video, as you can see. We got a nice kind of drape bus dollar here, a few cap busts, a few seated things, a few mercury dimes, everything. Um, it's just, you know, there's a lot of great coins here. But let's start out at the top here. This is kind of my favorite purchase uh, it really is kind of exciting to, to see this I haven't actually purchased an 1889 seated quarter before but once I bought it I kind of did a little research and Trent sold it to me so he knew uh, what he was selling but these are pretty rare there's only about 12,000 that were made and there's not really actually many in the pop reports and so we ended up uh, picking up this coin from Trent wanting to sell it I think this one's about a VG8 maybe a good six the rims pretty nice and uh, the details are all still all there. There's no really big scratches or marks that are distracting. And, uh, you know, just the cool thing about buying these is that when you buy them, you end up jumping in and seeing that a lot of these coins are pretty rare. And uh, it really helps you for next time when you run into your next 1889 seated quarter. So keep your eye out. It shows for these. Uh, make sure they're in good condition. Nice original. Not a lot of distracting marks on them. Got a few coins from ANX that uh, Trent sent in. This is a 1918 uh, Mercury Dime graded AU55. They had they say this is full bands, but not too sure. There's some kind of intense circulation on the obverse, as you can see, but you know, still has some kind of nice blast white and uh, a lot of remaining luster on the coin. I think it's still pretty nice. Don't see this every day in an ANX holder. This is an 1886 proof Indian head scent. They call this one Proof 60 Brown. 
Nice uh, kind of a little bit of a blue hue to it, but really a lot of brown on the coin. I like it, and uh, I want to offer something unique. We don't have too many proof proof Indian head scents that we offer too often, and so that one's uh, one that kind of jumped out to me. More of an affordable price. A lot of the ones that get in proof 65 and 64 are just you know, starting to get a little bit extra. You know, they end up costing you five, six, seven hundred dollars uh, This is an 1866 three-cent nickel right after the Civil War. Has a little kind of unique die clashing to it. You might be able to see the design kind of peeking through in front of the face and behind the head. But you know, no, no distracting spots on this coin either. I do like this coin as well. I, I don't pick up too many three cent nickels too often, but anything in the 1860s I've been really trying to pick up because I don't know, it's just interesting to me where everything fit in, in history. This is a 1916 Mercury Dime, your MS63 full bands by Annex. One of those cheap, affordable coins that I ended up picking up because um, Trent's just starting to utilize Annex to uh, send in a lot of his extra coins that are nice. We might start to do that ourselves and should take you guys along the process. Just let us know if you guys want us to do that. But nice blast white mercury dime here. Been going through 1916s like candy, so wanted to pick up another one that would fit in the shop. Got a few online purchases here uh, on this next row. It's a 1946 Walking Liberty half dollar. It's got a kind of like an auburn and uh, bluish hue to it. Toned on both sides, CEC approved. Uh, still nice, a lot of luster on the coin as well. I've been trying to get into, into tone walkers a little bit more because they're hard to find toned and I like that just extra appeal that they have. And when you look up Walking Liberty half dollars on eBay or you find something on Facebook, there's just so many and a lot of it's just starting to get really common. So Anything that jumps out of the ordinary like that, I try to pick up. Here's a 1934D uh, Peace Dollar, graded MS62 by PCGS. Bought this one because it was a nice blast white coin, and it also is in that 2.1 holder. It's kind of have that two piece here, and a little bit, and it has a rattler on the inside. Just fun fact about the coin, and uh, I don't know, I really do like the the I really do like the look of the coin, and uh, a little bit of a better date as well, so can't go wrong with that. Uh, another one of my favorites of the episode here is a 1900 $5 gold lib. And when you take a look at it, you know, it still has a kind of nice chocolate, nice kind of, not chocolate, but nice really rich gold to uh, look to it. it. has that kind of distracting spot behind the head there. And that's just uh, what you're going to kind of see in a few of these. That's just the way it goes. But I like the richness and the color of the coin. Also enjoy the rattler. Don't see too many out there on the market, so I wanted to pick one up for the shop. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you always want to see more photos of any of these today, kushacollectibles.com. I'll be happy to share them with you. Nice 1905 uh, Indian head scent. This one's great at MS64 Red. And when I started buying Indian head scents, I saw that a lot of them are brown or red-brown, but very few of them are actually red. Uh, there's just a lot that's been going on. They're held in different places, and stuff gets, gets to go brown really fast, and... That's the reason why I picked this coin up because I just don't see too many of these coins in red and especially in a rattler. So, decent little coin. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy this one as well. Very, I actually picked up an OGH, I think 1905, a few weeks back, and that one sold pretty quickly. It's just a very low pop coin. Here's the 1819 uh, Cap Bust Half. Kind of a low grade, you know, it's a fine 12, but. It is in the teens, wanted to, wanted to get something that wasn't in the 30s or 20s. And something like this really did kind of jump out at me. Royal Coins had a great little sale going on on their website. And you guys have time to go check out them as well. They're great great people, have great coins. Luis does a good job with photos over there. Bought this 1899 uh, sent from them as well. You can't, kind of, you can't see it, but when you aim it down a little bit, it has that nice little chocolate uh, look to it on both sides. And... Uh, I don't know, when I saw it in hand, I really did like it. Taking a look at the Civil War uh, seated half dime. It's kind of dark still. Might have a little bit of old cleaning on it, I'm not too sure. But XF condition. Don't really want to get anything lower than that right now, but I do like the coin. And I always try to buy stuff that's Civil War just because it has a little bit more of a kind of a tangible history and people look back on it and. Uh, Kind of enjoy just the, the time period that it was in where our nation, you know, they 
they were going through some rough spots, but the coins kind of still stayed around. And uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't get enough of the Civil War stuff. Really wanted to buy some more of that. Nice 1894-0. A uh, little bit of a better date here. Has a little bit of old cleaning on it, but it did pass an NGC. Something that is definitely not CAC worthy. I would call this one a little bit of like an older cleaning on the coin. Bought uh, a few kind of, of the tougher date stuff here to show it for the last of the video. This is an 1883 shield nickel that's a proof. Uh, no cameo on the coin, but still kind of interesting luster on it. I do like the little bit of design that it has on the obverse. And uh, Mr. Sonny, Blake's dad, really did cut us a nice deal on this one. And uh, yeah, very happy about that. Do like that coin a lot. Not too sure about the pedigree. I think it's just some some knockoff pedigree that someone made for maybe a family heirloom or something. Nothing that's like really pronounced and people know about. Here's the oldest coin of the video. This is a 1798 Drape Us Dollar. A little bit, a little dark, but still pretty nice and original. And uh, there's not too many of these out there. This one's the .9, and it has 10 arrows on it, and so I do like the coin. I think it's just uh, another thing that we can add to uh, the availability of our shop. Things that are a little bit older, but not too expensive. This one is graded good six, and uh, yeah. So next coin I want to show you guys is the 1811 uh, Cat Bust Half. This one is a large eight variety. There's a large eight and a small eight, and then there's the overdates that you guys can take a look at on this coin. But this one is the large eight. Has some still nice remaining originality to it, XF condition. A little bit of a tougher coin to find, and so I've been trying to buy coins that are in XF or, or high VF because most of the time they have a lot of uh, meat still left on the bone here. You can see just a lot of the remaining detail that you would normally like. And last but not least, a 1924 Mercury Dime graded MS63 by ANX. Has a little toning on the obverse here, kind of like a galaxy toning, and uh, yeah. Thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins here. Now let's uh, show you guys the car we just bought. So we're in the car and uh, we're gonna show you guys a few uh, things about it. Uh, basically the reason why we bought this car is because if we wanna go on a long road trip and uh, we don't wanna pay like thousands of dollars in gas, then this car is the one for it. How many uh, miles to go on this car? A claim on the internet. Uh, 58 to 61 miles to the gallon. Yeah, so I mean, it's just a good utility car, especially if we're gonna go to like Pennsylvania or Denver, stuff like that. Uh, just a more fuel efficient car, you know, just based on uh, this administration. And uh, we really just don't want to be paying a lot for extra things that we don't want to anyway. We just want to be buying coins and focusing on uh, improving that part of the business, but. Yeah, let's uh, show you guys around this car. Yeah, so a few things are missing here. You know, I think the the dash got some heat. It sat in the same spot for like four or five months. I think it may be even longer than that. But we can order those parts easily online. And you can even see that the heat really hit the screen, but based on the, uh, just on the monitor itself, it got cooked. But still works, everything's uh, pressable. You know, you can still work on everything that you'd want. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's still a pretty nice car. I like it overall and uh, uh, it'll just save us a lot in the long run, like I said, and be able to uh, help you guys out and buy some nice coins instead of spending money on things we don't really want to. Yeah, so we're here to take a look at the car. Um, we bought this car last week. Uh, we bought it from the government because of San Antonio or whatever it is, but like I said, we're trying to save money on uh, just everything in terms of cost, you know, from supplies to car to fuel everything uh, we got this car detailed today Casey brought it home from San Antonio today uh, and if you guys want to take a look around the car with me uh, you might be interested by it I mean you know it's just not the flashiest car most interesting car but uh, it's still something that you know gets us to point A to point B and uh, couldn't be more thankful for that you know, tires are pretty nice everything on the vehicles it's pretty good. I think there's like 82,000 miles on the car. And uh, yeah, if you look at the outside of the car, it's not too bad. It was left in the sun for a few months, five or six months. And uh, the reason why we're talking to you guys about this car is because we want to keep you updated on our life. 
what's going on with us, what we're buying, what we're selling in terms of coins, but also in terms of just things that help our business grow. No, no license plates on this thing yet. Have to get that all situated and figured out, but I mean, you guys want to get a crack open in the car here. It's all cloth seats, which is kind of a bad thing. I mean, you kind of don't want those to begin with, but we got this we got this car detailed today. It was really disgusting. I'll throw some pictures up now of what it looked like. And uh, yeah, it was it was gross. Someone didn't take care of their car, but welcome to the government, you know. A lot of space in the car for anything that we might need. Uh, you know, it's probably just as much space as the Avon was, so. Uh, but just double the fuel range, so that's pretty cool. We hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. I know it's not like a part of the video in its title, but it's just something that's interesting, like I said. Uh, leave a thumbs up, comment if you guys want us to talk more about what we're buying outside of coins and with coins. Uh, maybe you guys would be interested in that. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. That like goes a lot further than you would imagine. Subscribe if you're new because we're coming out with videos every single week. We're making a CAC video Monday and uh, we might be doing some cool and interesting stuff towards the end of the week. And uh, comment your thoughts down below what you think of the coins and also what do you think about how you look for coins. Are you going to just local shows or are you going to the big shows? A lot of things uh, to talk about in this video. We hope you guys jump in and uh, get plugged in. But we'll see you guys in the next video.